Good morning, everybody. Um, very, very excited to be welcoming you all to the first annual general meeting of the Australasian Society for Physical Activity. I'm Jo Salmon and uh, joined by our executive committee here this morning. Um, we're going to uh, give an update on the activities that, that we've been engaged in um, during very challenging times. Uh, but uh, I think in spite of that, we've, we've managed to achieve quite a bit when we reflect back on the last 12 months. Uh, so there's the agenda as follows. Hopefully everyone was able to see that on the, on the webinar, on the invite. Um, so we'll go through various reports. We've got a couple of more formalities um, to attend to. And uh, we also have um, a quorum. I know that with our um, constitution, we require only four people for, to have a quorum. So we've certainly achieved that. And uh, very pleased to, to be going through um, with the updates from the committee and finishing off with a special guest presentation. Uh, the, we, we've got a webinar format which is being recorded so that we can um, put it online for members that weren't able to attend today. And, um, during the presentations, please feel free to um, pop your questions in the chat function or save um, your questions for them. We'll, we'll do the questions after all the committee reports um, and hope to have a, a little bit of a discussion with you all um, at the end of the AGM presentations. So first of all, I'd like to give an acknowledgement of country as we gather for this meeting physically dispersed and virtually constructed let us take a moment to reflect the meaning of place and doing so recognise the various traditional lands on which we do our business today. We acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging of all the land we work and live on and their ancestral spirits with gratitude and respect. So ASPO was registered as um, a not-for-profit organisation um, on October 22nd, 2019. Little did we know the challenges that we were going to face um, in, in the few months after that registration. Um, and as I said, you know, in spite of that, I think we've managed to do pretty well. And the vision of our society is to advance knowledge and integration of physical activity into health, education, urban planning, transport, sport and recreation, um, and really uh, working in the three areas of research, policy and practice um, across all levels of government, non-government organisations, um, and in order to benefit the health and wellbeing of communities across Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. And the idea really is to, to have this forum of, of researchers, practitioners and policy makers so that we can advocate locally where needed um, and um, internationally also where needed, network, build capacity um, and share our expertise, experiences and hear about the latest work that's happening in physical activity across our region. So we have co established committee structures as, as you would see in the agenda. Um, we did have a soft launch of our website on the 1st of June and um, uh, We've continued to engage in, in a social media um, presence as well as, as well as having the website presence. And I think we've tipped over the 1,000 social media followers on, on Twitter, and, and, which is fantastic. Um, we applied in the new year last year to um, host the ISPA 2024 um, conference that we were pipped, unfortunately, by another country. Um, however, um, we might have another go at that in um, with, when, it, when the next call comes out. We were able to hold six online presentations, and I think what's been really interesting about COVID is the impact of, uh, um, you know, lockdown and, and COVID on people having much more of an online presence and, and in a way being able to reach a much wider audience because everything's online. So, but we're still keen to, to get together and, and um, we'll have a, a presentation about our upcoming um, first conference as ASPA um, later in the year. Um, this morning, that'll be, um, we'll, you'll hear a bit more about that. Uh, we've established two special interest groups. You'll also hear about that a bit more um, from, from Scott Duncan, um, from the Special Interest Group Committee. Uh, we have engaged in advocacy and social media activities, as I've already mentioned. And we're also um, really keen to work collaboratively with um, like-minded organisations in the physical activity or related fields, because of course, physical activity is quite um, 
uh, intersectoral, you know, as, as mentioned in our vision and mission, we're not just in, in the space of health, we're across a whole lot of different sectors. And uh, David Dunstan will talk a little bit about the MOUs we've got and really like some feedback on, on other organisations that we could connect with from our members. So this is our EC committee structure. Um, we have, uh, as I said, established various committees. The, the four directors who were um, responsible for establishing um, the society, uh, including myself, is David Dunstan, Trevor Shelton and Nikki Richards. Um, Leah Valenti has been wonderful in helping us from the very beginning in, in navigating a lot of the, the legalities. So um, big thanks to Leah for helping us get this um, up, up off the ground. And then we have um, uh, 14 members at large. Uh, Verity Cleland uh, is, is uh, chair of the membership committee. Sharaful Islam is uh, chair of the Early Career Professionals Committee and Ian Pinguan of the Southeast Asia Committee. Uh, Special Interest Group Committee is chaired by Scott Duncan with Cornel Vandermotti. Um, Kylie Hesketh is looking after the Australian Healthy Kids um, Australia, sorry, um, report card, so the Healthy Kids report card, which um, is, is I know only for Australia, but, but it's, it's a great opportunity for ASPA to take that one on. Um, the Scientific Program Committee is uh, co-chaired by Erica Hinkson and Dave Lubins um, and also with Lisa McKay. And then there's an abstract review subcommittee um, also um, looked after by Cornell. The Communications Committee, which probably has one of the bigger jobs um, for the society, is Sam Kassar and Tash Schrantz, and thank them very much for all their hard work. It's been an enormous amount of work that they've done uh, and continue to do to communicate to our members everything that's going on. And the Advocacy Committee uh, is chaired by Peter McHugh with support from Lindsay Reese. And we also have um, regular observers come along um, from government, Elaine Marshall from the Department of Health and Tassie and Justin Richards from Sport New Zealand. And we have had others um, often sit in on our meetings as well. So um, I'll hand over to David now and, and he can talk a little bit about the MOUs. Yeah. And um, thank you, uh, Joe, and uh, good morning uh, and good afternoon to uh, folk that are, are listening out there. I've just got the brief task of um, just uh, um, highlighting some initial work that we've um, been undertaking. In, and, and as Joe mentioned, in looking at um, establishing um, strategic collaborations with um, other organisations uh, who are like-minded in the physical activity field. Um, one such uh, MOU that... Uh, we have um, achieved is with uh, Exercise and Sports Science Australia. And for those that are not aware, that's a, 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 in Australia here, it's a, a peak uh, professional body uh, recognising or oh, well, representing the um, qualified exercise and sports science professionals and academics. Um, and the, the real purpose of the uh, MOU is to really enhance the, um, look at the synergies uh, across the organisations and, and, and foster a, um, a, a national cooperation, which is to benefit um, professionals and, um, and, and uh, those involved in the respective organisations. So we signed uh, an MOU and then um, unfortunately Unfortunately, we had a, a, a coronavirus pandemic, so uh, we have an upcoming uh, meeting um, to start to uh, look at uh, approaches to uh, looking at the, the collaboration between the organisations in, in, in um, a couple of weeks. So that's our, our first one there. Joe. if I go to the next one. Oops. There you go. <laughs> And uh, of course, uh, we, we are very keen to not be uh, Australia centric. And um, as the name mentions, uh, Australasian, um, we're very fortunate. Young Ping has been uh, you know, so kind to help uh, uh, coordinate another MOU with the Japanese Association of uh, Exercise Epidemiology, which we signed more recently in, in March. Um, just for those that are not aware, the uh, Japanese Association of Exercise Epidemiology is a professional body body aiming to develop research and exercise epi and exchange opinions with members uh, across uh, Japan. So we've been working with Koichiro um, Oka on this. Um, and again, it's similar to, to look at what are, what are the synergies, 
where could there be collaborations? Where could there be strategic partnerships? Um, so they're the two that uh, um, we've uh, completed so far. But of course, we're looking for other opportunities. Um, and we really would um, welcome any suggestions on um, like-minded organisations who, who, you know, would be interested in cooperating and, and, and extending ASPA's uh, reach. So, you know, really keen to uh, engage countries outside just Australia and um, and uh, uh, Japan, and we're, we're already working on some in Southeast Asia. Okay, so that that uh, is the MOUs. I think uh, Joe's just give me the the last task of uh, highlighting some of the future plans and activities. Of course, it's been a really um, busy uh, twelve months uh, establishing ourselves, but I guess now that we have established uh, that, we really want to work on developing a strategic plan and, and looking over a, you know a, an extended period. So that that is one of the priorities for uh, the Asper Group. Um, but I think something that's really exciting for uh, members is that we've now locked in a, uh, a monthly schedule of um, what we would consider exciting um, activities um, for the remainder of the year. And as Joe mentioned, not just uh, um, isolated to research, but looking at, um, you know, practice and advocacy, really um, wanting to, um, you know, uh, accommodate um, all aspects of physical activity um, and health promotion. Um, so this will include some of the, the the SIG launches um, and, and, of course, workshops and seminars, and uh, we're looking at having um, you know, guest presentations. So we're, it, it's going to be a busy schedule over the next uh, you know, uh, remaining months of the year, um, but uh, something that uh, we, we really hope that members can engage with. Um, and, of course, uh, we, we, we are always welcoming new ideas. Um, the EC has uh, um, been uh, quite busy in uh, developing up a good program, but we, we really would, um, you know, welcome uh, suggestions um, from, uh, from elsewhere and, uh, you know, really to build the, uh, the, 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 the program um, more extensively. Um, and, of course, we'll, we'll hear about uh, the in-person and the online conference a little later. Um, and then uh, we, we are going to put our, um, our bidding hat on again uh, and look at uh, applying for uh, the co-hosting of uh, um, some of the key conferences that you can see listed there. So um, a, a good year of uh, establishment and now um, over the next few year, um, year or so, we'll be uh, looking at consolidating that. Great, thanks, David. So just... Um motion that the President's report be received and noted and I can't see anybody on my screen so if, if someone could verbally say they're happy to um, support that. Yes, happy to support that. Thank you. And seconded. People might be muted, I think. <laughs> Joe, we have some raised hands uh, from the panel. Oh, great. Excellent. Thank you. I, yeah, I don't know why I can't see anything. <laughs> Just the slides. Okay, over to you, Nikki. Yep, good. good morning, everybody. Um, just to give you uh, an overview of the uh, TRES report um, so far. So um, as Joe noted, uh, last year when ASPA was uh, established, um, we received a donation to, to kick things off. But the main source of our income for the last year has been around membership fees. Um, as Joe noted, we had uh, an initial member discount that was associated with the soft launch, which ceased in August 2020. And the full fees have been um, ongoing since then. Um, this gives us a, a very good platform for identifying um, the budgeting moving forwards for subsequent years. Um, we are looking at conferences and events that would likely to provide uh, additional income streams. Um, as of yet, obviously, we haven't run those. So once we have, that will also help form some of the uh, budgeting processes um, in relation to future events for, for members. Next slide, please, Joe. Apologies, it seems to have got stuck. It's got stuck. I will stop share and try again. This sometimes happens. Sorry about that, everybody. Oh, 
apologies, anyone? So I just sorted that out. In terms of memberships, so it was around about 22,000 um, Australian dollars that uh, that came in an in income, in addition to the 40 that we received in to, to establish the society. Okay. Here we go. Um, in order to uh, establish the society, um, we've uh, we spent a, a lot of time focusing on the, the website. So there's been a lot of developments mm -hmm. in relation to the branding, the ongoing maintenance and the development of the members website, for example. Um, in terms of other expenses, there's been the uh, compliance and governance fees. So for example, the ASICs fees that we, we do have to pay, um, the Active Healthy Kids Australia membership um, that we've paid. And there's also the ongoing costs associated with the administration side of ASPA. So we've, um, we've invested in um, admin support, we've invested in the Microsoft Office suite for, for the society, and we've just established um, a zero account to enable us to, uh, to keep up to date with the bookkeeping and ensure that um, everything is documented and invoiced appropriately. So in terms of the expenses, we spent just under 23,000 uh, uh, on those, uh, those activities, and we currently have a cash balance of just under $40,000. So in terms of the, the things that we've done this year, we've identified the main uh, financial obligations that we have in relation to um, yeah, the, the website fees, the ongoing fees in terms of governance and compliance. And we're in the process of working with a not-for-profit specialist accounting firm so that they can provide the, uh, the support that is required in relation to um, the, the remaining governance. So for example, tax returns and that type of thing. Um, we've been liaising with them in relation to auditing processes and uh, establishing um, our ACNC number as well. So that's our charitable number. Um, so that, that's uh, work that's in the pipeline at the moment. As I mentioned, we've established a zero account for our bookkeeping and the future uh, reports from the Treasurer will, be, uh, will, be, uh, will look a little bit different because we'll be using that system moving forwards. We're in the process of integrating zero into our ASPA um, website, so that will mean that the accounts are talking directly to each other and it'll make it easier for invoicing purposes. And one of our members, Yamping, uh, raised the, the the issue of um, Alipay and being able to pay membership dues, for example, through Alipay. Unfortunately, our bank is Bendigo Bank, who aren't affiliated with Alipay at the moment, but we have been speaking to them and that is something that is um, in process. So once Alipay is, can be integrated, we'll certainly look at that and, and make that compatible with the website as well. And we are in the process of finalising the, uh, the income and expenses, which takes into account all, all those points um, highlighted there. So the future member activities that will be discussed by uh, some of the subcommittees moving forwards and in relation to the full memberships uh, as well. So. It got stuck again. Oh, there we go. So into just a sort of profit loss statement just to highlight where the, those main, main um, activities have come from. So as I mentioned, memberships account for the most of the, uh, the income and the website has been the, the, major, um, the major expense for the society, but that, that should reduce um, given that the majority of the, uh, the support that is needed um, will be a, a substantially less in cost. Thanks, Joe. So um, again, motion that the Treasurer's report be received and noted. I'm happy to nominate and just need someone to second. I'm happy to second, Jo. Thank you. It's Kylie. Thanks, Kylie. Over to you, Verity. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. Um, great to have so many people on board. Um, I'm Verity Cleland. I'm based in Hobart, Tasmania, um, and I chair the membership committee. Um, the purpose of our membership committee is to really support the ASPA exec executive um, in its activities related to increasing and retaining members. Um, I have um, the pleasure of working with um, a couple of other people from across um, Southeast Asia um, and across sectors. Uh, Nigel Harris, Hashi Peris and Elaine Marshall all um, sit on the membership committee as well. So I'd just like to acknowledge their contribution. Um, I can't move the slide along. Can someone 
Oh, thank you. Did I do that or did someone else do No, that? that's me. I'm, I'm pushing the button. <laughs> Thanks, Jo. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is this is the slide that shows our, our membership to date. So as mentioned already, we launched, had a soft launch in June last year and had a promotion on um, on our registration fees, um, which ended around August. And you can see um, we had a pretty, you know, rapid increase in memberships over that period, which has towards um, the latter half of last year really um, plateaued um, and, and set into a, a pretty stable mode there. Um, for those who are interested, our one year memberships are clearly the most popular um, with a, a handful of people choosing the, the longer term options. Um, I think as David Dunstan mentioned, you know, this first year has really been about, you know, a lot of planning and getting, getting things ready, getting systems in place um, and as our um, larger events and special interest groups start to develop and evolve I think we'll see um, some steady increases again over time. Uh, next slide thanks Joe. Thank you. Um, so the membership committee sort of has been working behind the scenes um, to do a number of things. So clearly we've established a committee um, with that nice geographical and sector representation. Um, we've developed terms of reference, um, policy and procedures. Uh, we do interact a lot with the back end of the website um, where uh, membership data are stored. Um, so there's a, a fair bit of that back end work that goes on. Uh, we've developed scoping papers around um, organisational and role-based membership. We've established terms and conditions for a number of um, membership options, so student memberships, um, subcommittee member benefits and for membership transfers. We work to finalise our privacy policy and then we do some lots of business as usual stuff, generate monthly membership reports, lists for our um, e-blasts and we respond to member queries and pass those on to the executive and or the relevant subcommittee um, as they come in and we, we talk about um, ideas and provide that advice to the uh, executive committee around um, our primary purpose. Thanks Jo. Um, as we move into this next year of, of ASPA, this exciting year where we'll have conference and um, a regular um, series of events and special interest groups, um, we'll continue in our role to support the executive, um, continue to work with those um, subcommittees and support them uh, as as best we can and continue to do our, our business as usual um, activities around responding to members, queries and, and feedback. Um, and as always, you know, for those who are on the group, we you know, do encourage you to get in touch if you've got ideas and suggestions. Um, and probably something that I haven't noted on this slide, but I'm very mindful of is how we ensure that we um, as a society are responsive, not just to the academic sector, but also to policy and practice. Um, a lot of people the feedback so far has been that people in those roles are often not just focused on physical activity they have um, often large portfolios with a range of topics and so um, to attract um, people working in those roles we have to you know think a little bit differently and that's something I'd really like to think about over this next year. Um, um, I don't know if now's the time for questions Joe, but um, I'm certainly happy to take questions offline or, or at the appropriate time. Yeah Thanks, I think Joe. we'll We'll hold the questions till um, sure. all the reports are presented. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Jay. Over to you, Sharifal. Uh, thanks, Joe, and uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Sharifal Islam. I work at the Institute for Physical Activity and Nutrition at Deakin University, and I chair the Early Career Professionals Committee. So the purpose of the ECP committee is to facilitate networking, mentoring, and capacity building. We want to create and facilitate networking opportunities for students and early career researchers, practitioners, and policymakers. We offer mentoring opportunities for students and early career professionals. Both we intend to do as a structured and unstructured mentoring programs in future. And we also intend to provide capacity building through providing learning opportunities and skill development and help disseminate evidence-based uh, physical activity promotion materials and resources. 
uh, activity is still there. Last year, we uh, tried to recruit all the members for the ECP committee, and currently we have a chair, a vice chair, Anum Uroj, and uh, members Louisa, Sarah, Matthew, Bridget, and Jessica. So I think they are all very uh, much involved in our activities. And we also received a lot of interest from early career professionals and practitioners to join this committee. And uh, we decided that we will take this slowly. We don't want a lot of members to just come and be part of the ECP committee while not contributing. So people who are really enthusiastic have got new ideas and want to provide uh, new ways to promote our activities will be welcome in the uh, committee. And I hope that we will increase this number in future. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we also discussed and finalized the terms of reference for the membership uh, for the members and how this will work. And this has been approved by the ESPA Executive Council. And we planned an online physical activity debate that I will be talking next. So uh, our next activity is uh, an online debate that is scheduled on May 27th. And it, the topic is a 15% reduction in physical inactivity will be achieved in Australasia by 2030. And uh, the topic refers to the global targets of the World Health Organization's Global Action Plan on Physical Activity 2018 to 2030. And this uh, online debate has been organized in collaboration with ISPA and uh, we hope that we'll have a very good uh, debate about uh, a team uh, positive and team F negative will debate whether this is achievable or not. And the debate speakers include Professor Tim Olds, Professor Holly Thorpe, Associate Professor Melody Ding, Associate Professor Simon Rosenbaum, Angela Douglas, and Jenny Atkins. And I welcome you all to register for this event and book your calendar for the 27th of May at 3 p.m. That's all though from my end. We have created, I mean, the members have created some promotional materials and I hope you can all join this exciting debate. I think this has an animation but it's a bit fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> it has been created for mobile apps, I think. <laughs> Great, thanks, Sharifal. Um, Yan Ping. Thank you, Joel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Yan Ping Duan, working at Hong Kong Baptist University. I chair the uh, Southeast Asia Committee. And the purpose of SE Asia Committee is to promote the influence and engagement of ESPA in countries and regions of SE Asia. In addition, we aim to uh, facilitate the diversity of research culture within ESPA and provide opportunities for researchers, practitioners, and policymakers from SE Asia to share their experience, uh, expertise and experiences at the ESPA. So, uh, Joe, please, <laughs> thank you. And uh, during the past one year, uh, the SE Asia Committee uh, has uh, implemented a number of uh, a number of activities. Uh, for example, at the very early uh, stages of ESPA development. The SE Asia Committee was established in May to, uh, 2020. And um, with six members, among them three from Hong Kong, one from China, one from Japan, and one from Sri Lanka. We also finalized the terms of reference document, uh, which had been moved by the SRC. And we had two committee meetings for the past one year. In addition to that, uh, we also uh, attend the COVID-19 series video event organized by the ESPA. I interviewed Professor Jung Pak Kwon, the chairman of Physical Fitness Association of Hong Kong on the topic of the maintaining physical activity during the COVID-19 outbreak in Hong Kong in August 2020. And another uh, very exciting news is that, as um, David uh, mentioned before, that uh, we, we just signed 
the MOU between ESPA and the Japanese Association of Exercise Epidemiology uh, just two weeks ago. Um, so I think with this MOU establishment, um, it is expected that ESPA uh, can have a more in-depth collaboration with other uh, religious professional society in Southeast Asia regions. Next one, next slide. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, in terms of the future plans and activities, um, first thing is uh, currently we are working on the MOU between ESPA and the Physical Fitness Association of Hong Kong. Um, it is expected that we will facilitate this event in the upcoming several months. And in addition to that, uh, we would like to continue to enlarge the number of ESPA members from SMA Asia through collaborating with membership committee. Uh, right now, there is a relative small scale uh, members from SMA Asia. So uh, we need to do a lot of uh, work uh, to <clears throat> increase the members from our SMA Asia region. And Secondly, uh, for the next one is we would like to organize an ESPA promotion forum within Asia countries and regions uh, in May, tentative in May uh, this year. We are planning uh, to invite ESPA president and the relevant ET chairs uh, to introduce the ESPA and have interactive communication with uh, attendees uh, from Asia, and hopefully uh, through this promotion event, um, we, we can uh, increase the influence of ESPA uh, within the SP Asia region uh, countries. And uh, finally, um, it is exciting that uh, there will be the ESPA annual conference in November this year. So as the SP Asia committee, we would like to do more promotion to attract more uh, participants from SE Asia to attend this exciting annual conference. So that is all for, uh, from SE Asia. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Yang Ping. Okay. Sam. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, I am co-chair of the communications committee with Natasha Schranz. Um, and I guess as you'll see on the screen here, uh, and hopefully we've seen through some of our work so far in the last 12 months, uh, we've really focused on trying to get our name out there um, to make sure that within the region ASP is known um, through some sort of targeted messaging and communications across uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, we've got a YouTube channel as well. Um, we're really, I guess, trying to initially promote the ASPA uh, information and activity. So um, trying to make sure that our members are up to date with what's going on and any achievements that, that we've sort of had so far. Um, and moving forward, we really want to try and spread as much advocacy messages as possible um, throughout the region. So uh, another key point and one of our main purposes is that we'd really like to be able to advertise and, and highlight some of the work that's going on from our membership. Um, so whether that's in research, policy or practice, uh, that's one of our main aims moving forward. So to date, uh, as Nikki mentioned, we've launched the website, uh, which uh, took a bit of time and, and we were hoping that that's uh, now well used. So we're regularly updating the news section of the website. Um, we've also, as I mentioned, launched a social media presence. Um, we've been uh, organizing the six part COVID-19 series um, and that's on our YouTube channel. So if anyone hasn't yet seen them uh, and is still interested in hearing more about physical activity during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, then they're, they're saved online there. Um, and we also help to coordinate and ask for response to the Australian uh, consultation on the national preventative health strategy. Okay. 
Uh, and moving forward, as I've said, we, we really do want to try and continue engaging with our members, um, making sure that we're promoting as much policy practice and research as possible um, and continuing to raise the awareness of ASPA. Um, we're nearly up to around 200 members on LinkedIn, so I think that might be a focus uh, for us moving forward. Um, and we're hoping that we will hear from, from members as they as have news and as they have extra work. Um, we, we see this as a, a real chance to sort of amplify any relevant activities for our members. Members, um, and, and we want to we want to work together with as many of you as possible. Um, in terms of the actual committee ourselves, we're always looking for extra help. Um, so if you're interested in in uh, starting up with communications and, and getting the word out there about physical activity, then uh, get in, get in contact. But yeah, that's all from us, um, and we, we we hope to keep working with you soon. Thanks, Sam. Peter, over to you. Uh, thanks, Sam. Thanks, thanks, Joe. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Peter McHugh. Uh, I'm a policy person located in uh, Sydney. Um, I'm the chair of the advocacy committee, and we've got uh, six members at the moment. We've got uh, Lindsay Rees, Trevor Shilton, Sam, who you just heard from, uh, Simon, Simon Rosenbaum, uh, Matt McLaughlin, who's, uh, who's clearly going across a, a number of different um, subcommittees, and Michelle Daly, who can't join us anymore. Uh, but she was a, a member for the, the first six months. Uh, our, our purpose is very much to uh, promote and lobby to increase physical activity uh, right across Australasia. Um, we've try, we're trying to identify champions um, and, and really look uh, and, and champion, sorry, uh, key advocacy opportunities. Uh, we're collaborating with partners to maximise reach and impact and build capacity of future physical activity advocates. Uh, Joe, um, if you just move on. Yeah, we've had a, a few um, uh, activities. It, really, the uh, like the other subcommittees, the focus was on the establishment of the subcommittee for, for the first uh, or the second half of last year, um, developing terms of reference, uh, recruiting members. We're, we're really keen to expand the membership. So at the moment, it's uh, our membership is just uh, our subcommittee or our committee membership is just Australian. So we'd really like to expand that to other countries across the region. Uh, we, we've, um, in terms of activities, there's a couple of, um, of the videos that Sam highlighted uh, were prepared uh, for the, the, the COVID period. So Lindsay interviewed Trevor Shilton in, in regards to physical activity uh, advocacy essentials. And um, I interviewed Matthew Burke uh, about active transport opportunities that were emerging from uh, the COVID uh, environment and, and the opportunity to increase space. Uh, and um, as Sam highlighted, uh, ASPA prepared a response to the Australian Preventative Health Strategy consultation paper. So um, that was a nice example of how uh, we can, uh, ASPA can prepare a response quickly uh, to an issue that, that's raised. Um, our, our future plans are really to uh, expand that, um, as I mentioned, the membership so that we've got some international dialogue uh, around physical activity advocates right across the region. Uh, confirm our priority messaging and, and then really communicate that regular messages, uh, sorry, those messages regularly. So we've got that, those key messages being repeated by as many different advocates as we can. Um, collaborate and, and um, uh, collaborate with our uh, like-minded organisations and try to really capitalise on the MOUs with, um, that, that we've heard that are established to, to try and reach, uh, extend our reach and build capacity for physical activity advocates. So we've got a couple of activities planned later in the year, uh, including a, um, a, an August uh, skills-based webinar, and then we're planning a workshop later in the year as well. So look out for those opportunities. And, and I would just repeat that we're really keen to see membership uh, beyond Australia. So we, we'd welcome uh, uh, any expressions of interest across the region. Thanks very much, Peter. Um... I think, is it Dave or Erica who's talking? Do we have Dave or Erica on the Joe, I can't see um, Dave or Erica on the call. I'm happy to wing it if you'd like me to, or Cornel, if you wanted to jump in. Um, I'll, I'll wing it. Great, thank you. <laughs>
Hello, everybody. My name is Camille Van Alter. I'm at the Simple uh, Kings at University based in Rockhampton. I'm part of the scientific program committee. I wasn't planning to talk here, but so I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, so Erica Itzen and David Lukens, they are the co-chairs of the committee, and myself, Lisa McKay, and Carly and Jordan Smith are um, all part of the committee as well. Um, we've had nine meetings since the start, or, well, since the formation of the committee. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the, the organization of the program for the annual ASPA conference. Uh, that's our purpose. Um, so um, uh, what's all on this slide? Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll um, so we will organize um, an event this year, a conference type event, but due to COVID, um, it will it will be well very different than what we normally would be doing. So it will be some sort of um, a hybrid event which um, will will have a physical presence at three different venues in uh, Newcastle, uh, Melbourne, and Auckland. And where we have people um, physically being present in a, uh, in a location and doing presentations there, but everything will be um, beamed across Australasia and people can, will be able to attend wherever they are. And, um, uh, and so the idea will be that um, uh, I think the sessions in Auckland will be first is in that one and a half hour time slot there. Uh, and then we move, I think, to Newcastle and then to Melbourne uh, and conclude the day there. Um, uh, and, um, okay, see the next slide here. Um, uh, so we'll have three teams uh, for each uh, location. So in Auckland, we'll be talking about physical activity in the built environment. In Newcastle, we'll be talking about physical activity and mental health. And in uh, Melbourne, we'll be talking about uh, physical activity and implementation science. Um, we will um, have one keynote speaker at each location that will go for half an hour and then um, a combination of mid and early career researchers as well as policy and practice experts uh, that will talk for um, uh, 15 minutes. We'll, we will aim to have a good mix of all of that at every venue, which will be a bit challenging, but we're working on that. And um, then the, every session at every location will end with a 20 minute panel discussion, um, open with the, uh, the audience. Um, I think I've said everything that's on this slide. Um, yep, so we're working on who will be talking. So the, the keynotes are to be determined. Um, we will have, we, will, we won't have um, normal oral presentations that a normal conference would have, but we will invite people to submit abstracts for posters. Um, and these posters will be fully electronic. There will be, um, between each of the three venues, there will be a, a break of 40 minutes, I think. And we will um, put the posters online uh, between the breaks as well as at the venues. They'll, they'll be on the big screen there um, on the, during the break. And um, they will also be on the Zoom um, in between. So, and we will be inviting people to submit abstracts for, for these posters. Um, we're working on a, 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 spo a sponsorship policy, or we, we, we're looking at inviting people to sponsor the, the, the conference. So if anyone's online here that's interested um, in contributing, please uh, contact our committee. We are very happy to hear from you. Um, there will, uh, this year, because of the special sort of uh, hybrid um, Activity that we're doing, there will be, there won't be the, the normal, typical sort of conference uh, presentation awards that we normally have, but we will organize uh, other uh, awards. And um, for example, um, one that we will organize is um, a publication award that goes back, that looks back for the last two years. And um, we'll, we are working on guidelines for that at the moment. Um, And yeah, we're still working on, on the, the costs as well. I don't know if there's more slides. Great, thank you. Thanks, Cornel. Thanks for stepping in. Uh, appreciate that. Um, Scott, over to you. Thanks, Joe. Kia ora tato. My name is Scott Duncan. I'm at the Auckland University of Technology over here in New Zealand. And I co-chair the Special Interest Group Committee with Cornel Amanda Lanotta. Uh, don't worry, Cornel, I'll cover this one for you. Um, 
So what is a SIG? I thought I'd better start with it with um, with that. Uh, a SIG, I guess, is a is a group of of ASPAR members who um, meet to discuss, disseminate evidence, and promote networking and collaboration on a specific issue that falls within physical activity. Um, it's got a very much a, a career enhancement focus as well in terms of postgraduate students, emerging career researchers, and it really is a communication and collaboration uh, initiative between academics and practitioners. Uh, we followed on from the International Society of Behavioral Nutrition and Physical Activity, who have been using SIGS for many years, and so we thought this would be a good strategy for an as base we grow to develop these areas that can focus down on really important topics. So, um, as part of the SIG committee, um, or if there are any Australians listening, a SIG committee, we, uh, we've done a few things so far. Our purpose is to provide advice to, oversee and lead uh, the EC on anything related to SIGs. And at this point, it's really been establishing our methods for how we want to process SIG applications and SIG terms of reference. So it really has been a set up phase at this point in time. Um, we will have annual work plans that we, we will expect from SIG. So there are some deliverables that SIGs will have to um, deliver and we will review those and make sure that everything is functioning correctly. Um, so if you could flick to the next slide, please, Joe. Yeah. So um, yes, we assembled it last year. I've, I've gone through the members, but we do have actually, yeah, sorry, I've gone through the chairs, but the members we have are Harriet Courts and Karen Lee, um, who are going to be establishing one of our first two SIGs, that's a scalability and uptake SIG, or super SIG, which is, a, I think, probably the best name we could come up with. Uh, and then Lisa Barnett and Pierre Comis, who are doing the physical literacy, literacy SIG. So there's two SIGs that we've already uh, been working with and using them, I won't say guinea pigs, I'll say exemplars, as, as how we can best process SIGs um, to, to get them established and get the membership up high and, um, and make sure that we've got a process in place to um, to carry them forward in the, in the difficult first 12 months, which is often the hardest 12 months. And so um, we also have been communicating with other members who have informally been expressing interests in establishing their own SIGs. And there might be people watching at the moment who um, have ideas for SIGs. And so our ideas will be to collect some expressions of interest and next month we'll, we'll be doing a launch, which I'll, which I'll talk about. Uh, and we can sort of collate that information and, and link people together uh, where necessary. We developed terms of reference for the SIG committee and the individual SIGs. And uh, yes, as I said, we've reviewed and established the super and um, physical literacy, literacy SIGs, which will be formally launched next month. Here we go. Nice segue into this uh, future plan. So we will have a formal launch next month and it will be a webinar series, a, we a webinar, uh, where we will go through both of these SIGs, the purposes, the membership uh, and their the 12 month plans. And within that process, we will also release a call for expressions of interest for new SIGs. So this will be a formal call and we will have a, uh, a, a SIG page on the ABSAR web, ASPAR website where people can express their interest and we'll, um, we'll I guess, collate these, as I said, and, and, and fee provide feedback to those um, who, who might find that they can collaborate with others. Um, as I should say also that SIGs will have their own sort of structure and, and, and events and things that will, that will proceed in the next um, two or three years. Um, I haven't included them here, but of course, every SIG has their own, um, their own schedule as well. So we're looking at potentially maybe three to four SIGs by the end of 2021. Uh, there is a sweet spot, I think. We don't want to go overboard with too many SIGs or dilute the importance of them, but um, we do want to grow, um, you know, establish SIGs as we grow um, and review those 12 month plans. There is some SIG funding as well. So some of the funding that we, we um, gain from membership fees, um, we will be disseminating to SIGs to establish some of their um, facilities and, and wards and things like that. Um, but we haven't, we haven't assigned any funding as yet. And I believe that's me. Great. Thanks very much, Scott. Kyle? Thanks, Joe. Um, so I lead the Active Healthy Kids Australia Committee um, with David Lubins, Professor David Lubins. For those who aren't aware of what Active Healthy Kids Australia is, um, the purpose has been to um, represent Australia on the Global Alliance and produce the Australian Physical Activity Report card. So um, there is um, a report card looking at the physical activity of children and youth in Australia, and there are 60 other countries around the world who produce a similar thing. It happens twice a, um, every two years. And of course, last year was the year that we were due to be releasing the next report card, but that has been put on hold till 2022 
for obvious reasons. So they're within the 60 countries underlying the Global Alliance, they'll be reporting on pulling together data, national and state representative data to report on children's physical activity under a number of indicators, which include overall physical activity, organised sport and physical activity, active play, active transport, sedentary behaviour, physical fitness, family and peers, school, community and environment and government. Um, and in addition to that, Australia is looking at also providing a grade on physical literacy. Um, so there is opportunity to add additional indicators if ever, anyone um, in our membership has a strong interest in, a, in getting an indicator on a particular area, we'd be happy to hear from you about that. The real purpose of the physical activity report cards are as an advocacy and awareness raising tool. So they, they're used often with government and um, raising public awareness around the fact that our children are not as physically active as we would like them to be and the Global Alliance has the benefit of um, pulling together data so that you can compare across countries where countries are doing well and where they're doing not so well in terms of promoting physical activity for children. So our activities last year were really around developing an MOU between ASPA and the Global Alliance to be part of um, this Global Alliance for the fourth um, Global Matrix report card. We've established our working group who will work on pulling the data together and determining grades and set our timelines for um, the 2022 release. We're currently identifying eligible data to be included in the grading and establishing data agreements with the custodians of the data. So again, if anyone is aware of state or nationally representative data, either for Australia or um, for our other member countries, so New Zealand and Southeast Asia, please get in touch. We're always happy to hear about new data we might not be aware of. Our future plans and activities are really around proportion preparing the 2022 report card, which will be launched around the middle of next year, the date to be determined. Um, and we're also working on collaborating with other member countries so that we can produce our own matrix of grades for our region, Asia and Oceania, um, in addition to the global matrix that will be produced. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Kylie. Okay, I might stop screen sharing for a bit because I'm sure that I think there's some questions in the chat um, but, um, and also perhaps some people might have some questions of the committee before we have um, the final presentation from Jasper. Um, so let me have a look here. Um, Sam, I don't know are we able to have people Rachel. Well, hey, Joe. thanks very much for that. I was just wondering um, how much, if any, sleep and sedentary time are part of ASPA. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Great question. Um, I think they very well could be if, if we look at our guidelines um, in, in, well, certainly in Australia um, and possibly New Zealand, you could tell me that, you know, it's, it's this 24 hour movement approach. So, um, I think that we would certainly welcome, um, you know, obviously in our conference, we'd welcome sessions on that. We would have, you know, a, um, also presentations or, or symp symposia or, or forums on that during the year. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, as part of that 24-hour movement um, aspects um, would be really important. So I don't know if anyone else has a response to that as well from the committee. So Rachel, from your perspective, are you um, thinking in terms of a special interest group or, or simply, you know, for present, you know, for a conference and so on? I wasn't sure really. I just sort of wondered because I mean the website and the and the info yeah. tends to be fairly restricted to physical activity. And so yeah. um, but I assumed it would be um, open or semi-open. So I was yeah, just really trying to get a feel that yeah, there could yeah. be a, there could be part of conferences. I was just really intrigued. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. David, did you want to say something about that? 
I, I, I'm just going to add that, you know, there's precedence in, you know, for instance, uh, ISPAR is uh, a physical activity um, a society, but that does have its sedentary behaviour council, for instance. And you know, I think we, we could explore other ways in which um, to, you know, have that, that uh, specialised uh, interest area um, achieved, uh, Rachel. Great, thanks very much. Any other questions? From anybody? Was there a comment from Deborah? So there might have been a question there for membership verity in the chat chat box. Yeah, I've responded to that one, Joe. Oh, excellent, excellent. We've whipped through this so fast, we, um, <laughs> we we allowed much more time than we needed. So if there's no other questions from anybody, um, maybe I'll go back to sharing my screen and um, uh, we can hear from Jasper. Well, Joe, just before you do, I, I think it's appropriate to uh, send out great, uh, our kudos to you for all the um, you know, hard work that you've put into this over years now um, in, in getting Asper to this uh, point. There's, there's many, many hours spent um, uh, getting us to this point, um, and uh, we, we thank you all for your hard work and uh, persistence. <laughs> Thanks, David. And, and you know, I, I guess I did talk about it for quite a, a number of years and um, very excited but to, to get it up and running. But honestly, um, it is very much a team effort, so I appreciate your thoughts. But everyone's been fantastic in, in um, helping get this up and running. I'm going to just pop back onto the screen so that we can um, hear from Jasper Shipperin, the um, ISPA president. Everyone see that okay? So as mentioned, uh, Jasper is the president of the International Society for Physical Activity and Health, which obviously Jasper, um, you know, has a, has a, a connection with uh, as, as um, uh, a physical activity and health society. Jasper is also professor of the active living environments within the research unit for active living in the University of Southern Denmark. And his research focuses on the active living environments. Um, he's he's a guru when it comes to using GPS in um, looking at location um, of participants and tying that in, linking it in with accelerometry and GIS data to look at how people engage with their active living and, and space and location place and location, sorry. Um, and Jasper was was very kindly considering doing this presentation live, but um, I think it was something, uh, a terrible um, time of the morning for him in Denmark. So um, he, he agreed to record um, his presentation. So I'm going to press play for that. Hello everyone. My name is Jasper Schipain and I'm president for the International Society of Physical Activity and Health. And what I'll use the next couple of minutes for is to tell you a little bit more about what ISPA is and what we do and how we potentially could collaborate more in future with, yeah. with ASPA. So what does ISPA do? Um, ISPA is an international society for those interested in advancing the science and practice of physical activity and health. Uh, so quite similar to, to ASPA, but very much with an international focus, uh, a global reach. And ISPA organizes international conferences every two years. Uh, we create and deliver deliver training programs, we host webinars, and we disseminate research results. We also create advocacy materials, uh, such as ISPA's aid investments that work for physical activity, which I will tell you a little bit more about um, in a minute or two. Um, but before we get to that, I would like to, to mention that we uh, just decided that the uh, the, ISPA, the next ISPA Congress was originally planned for October 2020, it was already postponed a year. Uh, unfortunately, also in 2021, it will not be possible to have a, a 
an in-person meeting, at least for international participants. So it will be a fully virtual Congress uh, with local in-person activities. And more information on, on exactly the how and the what uh, will follow within the next 10 to 14 days. Hopefully by October 2022, um, we will be back to a little bit more normal uh, world where it will be possible to travel internationally and hopefully we'll be uh, able to, uh, to meet many of you at our ninth um, Congress in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates next year. Um, slightly different topic, uh, as you probably know, the, the WHO updated their guidelines on, on the physical activity and sedentary behavior in, in November 2020. And behind those guidelines, there is a wealth of evidence um, that is a great resource, but translating all this evidence and, and the guidelines into practice and the actual change in increasing physical activity is not quite as straightforward as one might hope. And uh, in recognition of that, we are together with WHO, we are uh, hosting a, a webinar series where we present some of the science behind the guidelines. But more importantly, we try to discuss and debate um, how this evidence and the guidelines can be translated into practice. And if you're interested, these are the, uh, the dates and the topics for the next three webinars in the series. As I mentioned, uh, one of the things that we have relatively recently done is create a series of advocacy materials related to eight investments that work for physical activity. Um, as I mentioned, WHO, the guide, the new guidelines, great resource, but they're not exactly developed as an advocacy tool where you relatively easily can say, okay, well, um, if you talk to a city policymaker, you can tell him or her um, what to do, what to invest in, which is why we created these eight investments as a series of materials that you can use to help advocate more physical activity and help integrate physical activity into national and subnational policies. And if you want to you know more, uh, have a look at the ISPO website. I said many different materials are available in, in various languages there. And I think um, that there is a plan for, um, for a more um, elaborate workshop on the eight investments uh, at a later point. So what are we planning to do for the remainder of 21 and also next year, 2022? Um, as I talked about earlier, obviously organizing conferences is uh, one of our, our main events and just like everyone else who's organizing events nowadays we're wondering how the world will look like in a post-covid world we've all learned a lot of the benefits and the drawbacks from virtual meetings but what does that mean for for physical meetings in the future so how will they look uh, what type of activities will we keep doing virtual um, will all conferences in the future be hybrid conferences with both online activities and in-person activities? We don't know, um, but obviously it's, a, it's something we have to figure out in, uh, and think about as we plan next uh, series of events. Another priority is capacity building. It's one of the main drivers for ISPA. So particularly we're, we're working with uh, low and middle income uh, country researchers, and early career researchers. And for both those groups, we would like to, uh, to help them develop capacity uh, to do better research and better research translation, research dissemination within the field of physical activity and health. And then thirdly, and one of the reasons why I'm talking to you today is that we focus very much on networking and collaboration. Um, we're far from the only organization working to promote physical activity. And ASPA is a very good example of another organization doing something very similar in a slightly different context. But we would like to work with many types of organizations, including national or regional organizations, but also international organizations such as WHO or UN Habitat. Um, potentially, you could also think of collaboration with organizations in slightly different fields, such as education, workplaces, or city planning. More specifically, and I hope you have some time at your meeting to, to discuss this, is um, 
we would like to think more about how ISPA could collaborate with ASPA. So um, the, the early career research debate organized by Bridget uh, and Tepi later in May is a good example, um, but there could be many other possibilities, I think. So other services that ISPA could provide uh, to help ASPA reach its objectives, but also in turn, how could ASPA help ISPA? Uh, all comments and ideas are very welcome. And finally, if you haven't done so already, have a look at our websites, consider becoming a member. As any organization, we are very much driven by our members. So all members are very welcome. And if you're quick, there is a 20% discount for the rest of March. Thank you very much. Great. So um, I'm going to again, uh, stop sharing my screen um, and maybe invite all you see or people put their cameras on so that we can see each other. Um, so I think there's some lovely opportunities uh, working with uh, ISPA and uh, the other organisations that, that we've identified moving forward and um, really keen to, to work broadly across different sectors as, as we said throughout this um, AGM. Uh, are there any final questions or comments for any of our committee um, or in relation to Jasper's presentation um, that we can potentially pass on to Jasper for you if, if um, you have anything? Nothing? Well, we've, we've whipped through this very, very quickly, much quicker than I anticipated. We thought we'd be two hours, but we've, we've done it in an hour. So, you know, physical activity, we're, we're just fitting <laughs> and, and moving quick. Um, thanks, everybody. I, I'd like to call the AGM to a close. Um, really excited about, um, thanks, Tony. Um, I think Neville wants to say something. Oh, Neville, Sorry. got a comment. Oh, um, just, I don't want to hold things up. Just, I think I'd, I'd like to say congratulations to everybody. Uh, it's been such an impressive um, program of work that you've done and the, the progress I think is, is fantastic, the way that you've taken things forward. And, you know, looking back over the years, it's been a, an amazing journey to get to this point from the very early days of, actually trying to get people to even think that physical activity was something important for public health. Um, and look, I, I think that Australia has been terrific in terms of, of the kind of leadership that we've had. We've had a lot of people, especially Comrade Trevor, who uh, has just been a stalwart through the Heart Foundation. The progress has been fantastic. We've got such a good base in Australia. We've got the Heart Foundation there so strongly on the page. Uh, of course, our capacities in Australia nationally through the constant turnover and change at Commonwealth level is always frustrating. So it's just so important when we don't have the equivalent of a physical activity branch like the CDC has in the USA or things that exist in other countries, uh, something like ASPAR is just really crucial to have a kind of ongoing institutionalised intelligence and activities going on. So yeah. I think what, whatever we can do to keep moving things forward uh, is going to be great and the results I think will be excellent. So be for me and great admiration. Thanks, Neville. And, and I think you raised some really important points there. And, and, and you know, you're probably one of the, the grandfathers of, of physical activity in Australia, certainly, if not if not globally. And well, probably you know, your grandfather, Joe, but you know, <laughs> not everybody's. Um, and so, you know, I think that looking back, you know, and, and the exciting part about working in the region is that. Um, each country in our region is at different stages. Um, New Zealand is, is certainly leading the way um, in terms of, you know, their physical activity, national physical activity plans and things like that. I think we can learn a lot from New Zealand and, and it's a great way to leverage our, you know, the Australian politicians um, to sort of, you know, 
say, well, gosh, you know, New Zealand's so far ahead of us in, in, in how they think about not just physical activity, but wellness and well-being. We've got a lot to aspire to. So thanks to our New Zealand colleagues for leading the way. Um, and, you know, other parts of Southeast Asia, I'm sure, are also, um, you know, varying in, in the level of um, physical activity recognition and a, from a public health perspective um, and also intersectorally. So I think there's a lot of work to be done for us in Australia. Really love to have us get a national physical activity plan. I know that's that's um, probably going to be Trevor's dying wish. Um, and, you know, I think there's, there's certainly a lot of work to do, even though it is getting there and it isn't certainly um, being more increasingly recognised. I agree, Neville, but I think we've still got a bit of a way to go. Thank you. And that's put forward a suggestion um, for a special interest group in uh, school-based um, physical activity. So there's, there's one suggestion already. <laughs> Thanks for that, Natalie. And, and just, just a reminder that next month we will have a launch where we'll have a web page which will allow you to enter data. So it's not there yet, but um, just keep, keep an eye on this space. Great. All right, well, thanks very much, everybody. Again, um, we'll, we'll close the meeting and uh, look forward to working with you for the remainder of this year and into the future. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, everyone.